Uh, here we have our free version of Hoboware, and we're going to be talking about the uh, UX9004 motor on off logger. So we're going to go right into that launch screen. And this is very similar to all of the other UX90 screens. Basically, you can use the internal sensors. These have two, uh, a two axis um, internal sensors we saw from our graphic. So this can be strapped right to the side of a motor. Uh, there's some magnets on it. It will hold itself to a motor, or you can use a strap, a Velcro strap, or come up with some other way to, to affix it to the side of the motor housing. You have the ability to select either state or runtime, which we, we talked about previously, and I will show you samples of both the runtime and state data. The state, again, data is recorded at that one second sampling rate resolution. Uh, runtime also uses that same sampling rate. However, it it will uh, collate that over an, an interval. So if you notice, if you select state, the logging interval is grayed out. Uh, so you, you're you're just going to record that raw um, data at that one second sampling rate. And in a state mode, you will see time and date stamped when the state went from off to on or zero to one, however you want to designate that and when it went back to zero again or off. Runtime, when we select runtime, we're still scanning at that one second rate. However, now we can set a logging interval. So Hoboware will calculate that runtime in percent of time per interval or actual minutes and seconds uh, during that interval of when it was running and when it was uh, not running or on or off. And again, you can select what those uh, nomenclatures might be, if it's high or low, off, on. Again, occupied, unoccupied doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but you can select that or you can put in a custom uh, type of descriptor. Most folks for, for motors, on and off makes sense. There's also an external input that where you can plug in a, uh, it's, it'd be looking for a contact closure. Uh, we sell a device called a current switch, which is, uh, it's, it's based on the property of induction. And it allows you to clamp that. If, if you have a motor that's either submerged or in some, some way not accessible, where the housing is not accessible to attach the logger to, you can use the current switch to um, clamp that around one of the leads, only one. Of the, of the leads going to the motor, either the hot or the neutral or one of the phases if it's multiple phase. And it will pick up, it will sense, the current sense, current switch will sense current flowing through that conductor and it will close that contact and we will log that as an on state. Again, state or runtime is selected. For the internal sensor, there are some advanced parameters. Basically you can allow to calibrate it, uh, allow the person, the user to calibrate it in the field. Basically calibrating it, uh, you're, you're educating the logger as to what an on motor state looks like. So there's a push button on the top of the logger and if you select this that it will, the, the button will be annotated on the LCD as calibrate, the word calibrate, and you put it on a running motor, and then you press and hold that calibrate button. There's a countdown, and then it it'll say auto cal pass. That will be flagged in the data file at the time and date of when that was done. And then the logger will be educated as to what a an on state looks like. You can also override that and just put in uh, just, I want it maximum sensitivity or minimum sensitivity, depending on the application. Typically, though, customers want to use the calibrate function to get their best um, their their best um, measurements, most accurate measurements from the logger. And then we start it. I have a little screen capture, a little video of the device working on a motor, and it shows how the icon, the little motor icon, changes from um, off to on. And I'm going to show that to you right now. We have our UX90004 motor on off logger connected to a little motor using the four rare earth magnets it's it's being held by those magnets that are included in the case you can see here that it is logging but it's not incrementing 
any runtime because the motor's not running. There's a, a couple of icons I want to call your attention to. To the you can see the large digits, those that that's runtime in minutes and seconds. To the right of that, there's something that says MS. That's minutes and seconds. If it was running for longer periods of time, that would switch from to H and um, H and M, so hours and minutes. And it can actually go up to days and hours as well. A couple other icons you might be uh, that you should be familiar with. The little mo that's a motor, a little picture of a motor, and you'll see a little on indication in there when we turn the motor on. And above that, it says calibrate, and then uh, uh, on the top of the logger, there's a push button. This gives you the ability to calibrate the logger, basically in, uh, educate the logger as to what an on motor looks like. So uh, we're going to do that in our little video here uh, right now, and you can see how that works. So here we have the motor. We're going to turn it on. And the motor is now running, and you'll see the little on indication come on in the icon. And the, the timer will begin to increment. And what we're doing now is calibrating it. Press and hold the button. It counts down from 4. And then it will say auto cal pass. Now we can release it. And it's recording its, um, its run time. So again, the motor is running. Uh, what we'll do is we'll let it run for a bit, and then we're going to turn it off, and you'll see that icon indication go from on to blank, and that will indicate that the motor is turned off. And there you can see that it went off. And also notice that our runtime is no longer incrementing now that the uh, motor has stopped.